Good morning, Eastside Youth. <clears throat> it's been a year. And I look back at uh, when, when all of these like midweek encouragement things started a year ago, and um, it was me sitting in my backyard uh, with not great video and even worse audio and thinking that we were gonna get an extended spring break. And here we are. Um, yesterday, March 16th, was a one year marker from when schools officially shut down in the state of Oregon. And even though there is a very tangible plan for going back to school, um, f f to my knowledge, for all of y'all uh, coming in, in the next coming month, I still feel that you are owed something more. And so, um, I'm going to share something that you've already heard from me about a year ago. And that is, it, it's something that I, I shared as we looked forward to what we thought would maybe be two weeks, month, um, and now I would like to share it again as we look back on a year. Joel 2.25 says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Y'all been waiting a long time to have some things restored to you. Um, whether it's getting back in school and seeing your friends or being around the teachers that you love or, um, you know, just being able to do stuff without worry or without some sort of concern about how somebody is going to react to you politically or otherwise. Um, and, and here in the coming month, I think that we are going to begin to see some of that restoration. But one of the things that, that is interesting is when Joel writes this and the swarming locust is eating something, you don't get that one back. Like, if this is my crop and the locust has eaten this crop, I'm not going to get that exact same one back. And so to you seniors who graduated in 2020, I know y'all are young adults now. Um, I'm sorry. You know, you've already probably processed it and that your graduation didn't look like what you thought it would. And I hope that this last nine months since then, that there has been some restoration in some way that has happened. I hope that's the case. Uh, for those of you who, who feel like you have missed out on whatever it is, um, whether it's events or, or doing stuff with, with friends and family, travel, summer plans, you know, what, whatever it was, school this year, you're not going to get that time back. And for that, I, I'm sorry. I desperately, desperately wish that you could. But what I do know is Joel 2.25 tells us that somehow God can restore to us the things that are lost. And so I would encourage you to look for God to do that in the coming month and, and even farther out as we progress, hopefully, away from a pandemic and toward a, uh, just another virus. Um, folks have passed away this last year. Um, and then this is not a political statement. This is just a, this is just an observation. Folks have passed away this last year from this virus. And 
and sex. That's all there is to it. Um, we as Christians have the task of caring for and, and communicating peace to the families of people who maybe have gone through tragedy this last year. Um, even outside the virus, it's been a roller coaster. Ice storms across the nation. Just one thing after another as far as political unrest. And you, as young people, deserve better. And so I hope that in the coming months, better is something that is supplied to you. Another thing I shared in, about a year ago was a passage from Ecclesiastes. And those of you who have interacted with me um, know well enough that Ecclesiastes is, is my favorite book of the Bible. Um, and in Ecclesiastes, the author writes, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and to pick up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear it away and a time to sew it back. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And if you notice in there, they're just these contrasting ideas of, of there's time for, for good stuff and there's time for bad stuff. And so I think we can all just kind of chalk essentially the last year, maybe a little more, up to some of that negatives column. But what, what that tells us is that hopefully we're getting ready to enter that, that time of the positives. I would like to highlight a few um, that stand out in there. A time to heal, a time to build up, a time to laugh, a time to embrace. A time to love and a time for peace. And I, my prayer is that, you know, now that we're looking towards things reopening school, starting back up for y'all, that some of these things are gonna start becoming a reality and you'll be experiencing some of them. Not that you haven't in some way in the last year, um, but I, I think it's been taking a little more work to find them. I wanna continue with something that I did not share previously um, during our midweek encouragement. And that is the next five verses in Ecclesiastes where he says, what gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He's made everything beautiful in its time. And he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to end. I perceive that there's nothing better for them than to be joyful and do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in his work because that's God's gift to man. Y'all's work has looked a lot different than maybe it normally would have. And you're probably sick of staring into a computer screen and talking to people on Zoom calls. And you're probably even sick of maybe seeing an encouragement video midweek. Um, I know as far as the Zoom calls go, I, I am sick of them too. And just remember that, you know, we are called to work at whatever it is we're doing as for the Lord. And, and that it can take a lot of work to find joy in those things, but we can be joyful and do good. 
That's what the author of Ecclesiastes says is one of God's gifts to us, to be able to do our work and be joyful and do good. So as y'all transition back into more in-person school, um, look for those opportunities. Look for opportunities to see those, those positives that are going to start coming. Um, look for opportunities to reach out to others because here's the reality. If you're seeing this, you know, you have in some way interacted with our youth here at Eastside. And we have tried to continue to have a place for y'all and a community for y'all to access even despite some of the chaos that has happened in the last year. And so you are going to go back to school to students who very likely have had no community, no interaction other than their computer screen for the last year. So take heart and take care of them. Do good. Um, again, I'm sorry that the last year that it was a year. <laughs> um, that's not a political thing. It's just, I don't know why. I feel like y'all are owed an apology from some type of an adult. And so I'm sorry that you are not in school right now. I wish, but it's coming. And this Sunday, is Mafia. And it's been 13 months since we've played Mafia. And I cannot wait to wander around our church and scream I'm the moderator and watch y'all do your thing. I love you guys. See you Sunday.